Hi, it's Bob Upshur, and this is the Gaining Perspective Podcast, where we bring you insightful conversations with some of the top thought leaders in the investment advisor profession and investment management industry. I am the founder and CEO of Advisor Perspectives. The commercials are relentless. Cleverly nestled between episodes of Matlock and the Golden Girls, each ad features boomer-friendly celebrities like Joe Namath, Mike Ditka, and Jimmy J.J. Walker breathlessly imploring viewers to find out if they're missing out on important new Medicare benefits, and to do so now before it's too late. Call the number on your screen now, urges Broadway Joe in one Medicare Advantage plan spot. It's free, and call they do. My guest is here to explain why Joe Namath and others may be the biggest threat to your client's retirement. Melinda Coghill is the founder of 65 Incorporated. Her firm offers the I-65 Medicare guidance software, and Melinda uses her expertise to provide seniors, their families, and their professional advisors with unbiased expert Medicare guidance. So Melinda, I understand that Medicare is more than just a job for you. It's a family tradition. Your mom, Diane Amdahl, is a Medicare expert and pioneer. Tell me about her and about your career path and how it led to where you are now. So if if you were to ask me 10, 15, well, okay, not 10, more like 20 years ago, would you be working with your mother creating a Medicare company? I would have thought you were nuts. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? I grew up basically listening to my mother and my father discuss Medicare at the dinner table. My mother started a company in the basement of our home when I was growing up, educating the nation's home health care agencies and long-term care facilities on how to comply with changing Medicare regulations. I watched her grow that into a multi-million dollar business that she exited in 2008. Along the way, she vowed that when she got done with this business, as she put it, uh, that she would help the consumer with Medicare because you can't help it when you're working in home health care, when you're working in long-term care, you see the mistakes that people make and how those mistakes impact them at probably the lowest points in their life, right? When you need to get long-term care, all of the Medicare decisions you made for better or for worse, come back and boom, there they are. So we started to, in 2012, we started 65 Incorporated, providing one-on-one -on -one Medicare consultations on a fee-for-service basis. We don't sell insurance. That is not what we do. We're trying to break an industry that we feel is broken. Many advisors who are listening to this spend a lot of time talking with their clients about optimizing Social Security choices, but they don't spend the same amount of time talking about Medicare. Why should advisors care about Medicare? I love this question. So if you were to look at, I don't care, look at uh, any retirement study being done. If it's IRI, if it's Fidelity, Vanguard, Edward Jones, it, Transamerica, Allianz, it does not matter. If it's a study being done about retirement and retirement planning, you are going to find one key takeaway. Pre-retirees are literally terrified of healthcare and retirement. They are terrified that they are going to run out of money before they run out of breath. The reason why this finding is everywhere is quite simple. Because when this conversation happens in a financial advising office, this is what it sounds like. The client will say, oh my gosh, I need to know about healthcare and retirement. What do I do? What do I need to know? I don't know. I'm not a Medicare expert. Well, where am I going to go get healthcare, healthcare advice, guidance? Here, talk to this insurance agent. Well, what if I run out of money in retirement because I made a mistake? Oh, you're an assets under management client. That would be horrible. You wouldn't be my client anymore. <laughs> I mean, literally, this is what's happening day in, day out. We, they're not social security experts, right? They're, they don't know all 2,700 rules under Social Security and the thousands of codiciles that go with the Social Security rules, but we'll talk to you about Social Security and provide you with really great, meaningful guidance. But when it comes to Medicare, the M word, no, I'm out. 
like it doesn't make any sense. But Medicare mistakes, one little Medicare mistake can derail a person's retirement, draining assets under management. They're not going to stop being a client because they didn't time Social Security right, but they may not be a client because they made a Medicare mistake. I mean, the disconnect is profound. So yes, tools and resources do exist to help financial advisors provide meaningful Medicare guidance without having to become experts themselves. But it's like, I'm not going to touch those because I don't want to deal with this M word that's over here. Uh, part of it may be the, the sheer complexity of the Medicare system and why there are people like you who are uh, who, who we need to be able to provide the kinds of services. I think everyone knows that there's a, an election that people need to make uh, for Medicare at age 65 or 65th birthday. When should advisors actually start talking to their clients about Medicare? So I would argue that they know, advisors currently know, when clients are approaching their 65th birthday and they have a tendency to mention Medicare. So yes, that's a very good thing to do. But in this country today, when people are terrified about healthcare and retirement, typically that happens in the late 40s and the 50s. They start developing a fear about healthcare and retirement when they are planning for their retirement. Just because a financial advisor won't talk about Medicare and healthcare and retirement to a client doesn't mean the client goes, oh, you're not going to talk about it? Oh, well, then I feel so much better. I don't fear that anymore. No. So basically what happens is the client has to find somebody else to help them with that fear, give them information. Predominantly, there are two people in this country today who are more than happy to guide your clients about healthcare and retirement and Medicare when you won't. These people are Joe Namath, right? But the other person is Bernie Sanders. I, when you are not willing to talk about Medicare, Bernie Sanders is there to give your clients all the information they need about what's coming in Medicare. Unfortunately, this is what I call the Bernie Sanders effect. When your client learns about Medicare from Bernie Sanders, they are learning Medicare is free, it's a single payer system, and it has no pre existing medical conditions. None of those things are what Medicare actually is. So should we be surprised that 40% of pre-retirees believe Medicare is free? That increases to almost 70% if you're talking about Medicare Part B, which is the part of Medicare that is $170.10 a month, plus Medicare surcharges if your, pers if your client is a higher income person. No, it's not free. It's not a single payer system. It does have pre-existing medical conditions that can keep people from getting the coverage that they want later in life. So you can't just let Bernie Sanders be your client's guide to Medicare. You can't. It, they will be approaching Medicare age 65 thinking that it, it's free. The single biggest cost in retirement arguably is health care. What is the role of an advisor when it comes to discussing these kinds of important decisions about protecting someone's health, protecting their nest eggs once they're on Medicare? So there's this mentality, this belief that you can set it and forget it because it was so painful getting in the door that, you know, I don't want to do that again. Unfortunately, pretty much everybody in Medicare has either a Part D prescription drug plan, Part D is the drug coverage, or they have a Medicare Advantage plan. Regardless of whether you have a Medicare Advantage plan or a Part D prescription drug plan, each and every year, those plans can change everything about the coverage while still maintaining the same plan name. So each year, October 15th through December 7th, there is this period called open enrollment. People can change Part D prescription drug plans to a different Part D prescription drug plan or a Medicare Advantage plan to a different Medicare Advantage plan. 
Thus, there's tons of commercials out there. Joe Namath goes to town <laughs> during this period. But what people don't realize is they will tell me, Melinda, why would I even waste my time trying to compare plans during this period? Because my coverage worked great for me this year. Well, that's great for this year. But legally, that Part D drug plan that worked great for you this year could drop the medications it covers. It could charge you 20 times more to get those medications refilled. The doctors that were in network this year might be out of network next year. The pharmacies are out of network. The premiums tripled. The deductible went from zero to $2,000, all while maintaining the same plan name. If you are not watching how your plan will change next year and making appropriate changes to your coverage as needed, you're the one left paying the bill. We have seen the differences be as high as $235,000. That's our record holder. A woman changing drug plans for one calendar year saved $235,000. Wow. Most retirement plans can't take a hit like that. And to be clear, this is an issue for Part D prescription drugs. It's an issue for Medicare Advantage. It's not an issue, I don't think, for Medigap coverage, right? Medigap is actually Medicare supplements, supplements, Medigap, Medigap supplements. They are the same thing. Advantage is totally different. You'd be surprised how many people call Advantage plans supplements. They're two completely different things. So when we're talking about supplement plans in 46 states in this country, you need a guaranteed issue right in order to get or often change a Medigap policy. So in many, many states, Alabama, Georgia, California, Arizona, these are just off the top of my head, but many more. If you have a Medicare Advantage plan and you want to change to original Medicare and get a Medigap policy with it, you're going to have to go through underwriting. And in many cases, you can't change Medigap policies without going through underwriting. So no, open enrollment is not applicable to Medigap policies. How common are the mistakes that consumers make with their Medicare coverage? Imagine the $235,000 mistake was was an outlier, but uh, I've also heard that, you know, 70% of consumers could uh, benefit by changing their prescription D coverage. How common are these mistakes? Mistakes are actually, I could spend all day, Bob, telling you about mistakes that we've seen people make. I mean, these range from, you know, simply not enrolling at the time that they were supposed to enroll. And now they have late enrollment penalties for the rest of their life. Late enrollment penalties are not like a parking ticket where you pay it once and you're done. They follow you each month for the rest of your life. So calculate that. That's late enrollment penalties. They're very common. But some of the more less common mistakes that people don't realize you can make, COBRA, taking COBRA after the age of 65. This is secondary coverage to Medicare. If you think it's the same employer-provided coverage, just more expensive, you literally can wind up without any coverage at all. We've seen this happen where a woman got a stage four cancer diagnosis, she didn't have a primary payer. When you don't have a primary payer, you yourself pay, basically it's the same thing as having no coverage at all. You're paying entirely for the bills. So it depends. We did a study, we took a look at um, all of our consulting clients and created an average client experience and then extrapolated that number out to the national population. In this way, we've estimated seniors make about $4.6 million worth, billion, $4.6 billion worth of Medicare enrollment mistakes annually. That's with a B. (laughs) So it's not a little thing. And that's annually that you compound that year after year after year. Let's pause for a couple of minutes for a word from our sponsor. I know that you already enjoy our content from advisor perspectives every day. So why not use our award-winning articles, commentaries, and charts 
to streamline your communications with clients and prospects. My team and I introduced AP Premium last summer, and we've been blown away by the response from the advisor community. Keep listening for an exclusive code to get $10 off our premium service. You won't find the in-depth, sophisticated market analysis and charts like Advisor Perspectives anywhere else. This information can be invaluable to help your clients understand complex topics. Let's say a client asks a question about their estate plan. Instead of spending time researching and drafting a long-winded response, quickly grab any number of related articles from our library and share it in a personalized way. AP Premium gives you the power to add your logo and a personalized message to any piece of content and share it directly with your clients and prospects. We also introduced a premium offering called the Ask an Expert webinar series. At our inaugural session, we were joined by Wade Fowl for an intimate Q&A. Advisors have told me this is one of their favorite perks of being a premium member, and we can't wait to share who's slated to join us next. Give premium a try and see for yourself why it pays to be a premium member. As always, we appreciate your support of our efforts to bring excellence to financial journalism. And as a thank you, I'm offering a one-time $10 discount for new premium members to be taken off your first monthly or annual payment. Just go to advisorperspectives.com forward slash member. That's advisorperspectives.com forward slash member and use the code podcast 2022. That's podcast 2022, all caps at checkout. And now back to our podcast. How often should advisors uh, revisit their Medicare issues with clients? At what time? Is it always at the time of this uh, October 15th enrollment period? Or uh, what, what are the opportunities to change coverage? So, so the opportunities to change coverage, first and foremost, are the open enrollment period, October 15th through December 7th of each year. For that period, you can change Part D prescription drug coverage to other Part D prescription drug coverage, Medicare Advantage plans to other Medicare Advantage plans. Getting a supplement is not what we're talking about. Um, There is also a period January 1st through March 31st where you can change Medicare Advantage plans to other Medicare Advantage plans. You can drop a supplement, drop a Part D prescription drug plan and get a Medicare Advantage plan. You can um, also, if you messed up Medicare and missed your initial enrollment period, during the general enrollment period, January 1st through March 31st, you can get enrolled in Medicare as well. So those are the the initial enrollment period is a seven-month period surrounding a person's birthday, 65th birthday. That's for the initial enrollment. A special enrollment period is for people over the age of 65 who delayed Medicare when they turn 65. They can get enrolled in Medicare through a special enrollment period when they lose coverage or retire. Um, You have to qualify for that period. It doesn't just happen automatically. You have to prove that you're you qualify for that. Um, and But then there's the general enrollment period as well. So open enrollment, general enrollment, special enrollment, and initial enrollment. What are the general trends that you're seeing in terms of clients selecting Medicare Advantage versus supplemental slash Medigap? What, what percentage are, are choosing Advantage now? So this is a nationwide trend that, if I'm being really honest, alarms me and should alarm a lot of people. Um, Medicare Advantage plans, they're more than 50% of people going into Medicare now will pick Medicare Advantage. When a person is enrolling in Medicare and knows they need to enroll, basically they're standing at a fork in the road. Will I have two path options. Some people have more if they have retiree coverage options or military coverage options. They can have more than two paths, but everybody has the path of original Medicare with a supplement or Medicare Advantage available to them. So the fact that now the more than 50% of people choose Medicare Advantage is alarming to me because there have been enough government studies done basically sounding an alarm. Whoop, whoop. You know, we've got 
problems here. Medicare Advantage is great when people are healthy. How many people after the age of 65 stay healthy until they die? I would think very few. That's the problem. Medicare Advantage, you do not see the problems with Medicare Advantage when you're healthy. Let's be honest. (laughs) Any coverage will work great for you when you're healthy. That's not why we have health coverage. We have health coverage for if we get cancer, we have heart attacks, have strokes, get Alzheimer's, develop Parkinson's, right? Those are the reasons why we have health insurance. We don't have health insurance to give us a $25 gift card to CVS every quarter or to give us a free gym membership that we won't use anyway. <laughs> like People get so focused on zero dollars in monthly premiums, free dental coverage, free gym membership, sign up today. They get so focused on these free benefits and getting all the things that they have a right to that they forget the reason why they have health insurance. They have health insurance for those things they cannot afford, the heart attacks, the strokes. Keep your eye on a ball. You keep your eye on why you have health insurance. You don't go get switch banks because this bank over here gave you a free toaster, right? You need to make sure you can put your money in and get it out when you need it. The reason we have health insurance is not for free dental, free gym memberships. We have health insurance for those things we can't afford. And as you said before, it's very difficult to switch from Advantage to Medigap slash supplemental unless you go through an underwriting process. We all know that underwriting means that when you start seeing the problems of Medicare Advantage because you had cancer, you had a stroke, you have diabetes, you have Parkinson's, underwriting means you won't be able to switch. Are there any circumstances where someone would walk into your office and you would say to them, you're better off on Medicare Advantage? Absolutely. Yes. There are four states in this country, New York, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and Maine, where you have what is called a continuous guaranteed issue, continuous open enrollment for Medigap. So what that means is you can remain on a Medicare Advantage plan for three years, five years, seven years when you're healthy. And then boom, you're not healthy anymore. Go ahead and switch to Medigap. You can do that whenever you want in those four states. So for it, if anything, it makes the choice more complicated, (laughs) like in those states. But you can switch back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Every other state, you need to know that the decision you make may become permanent. Are you okay with that? There's There's a philosophy in financial advising uh, related to LOMO, making your making sure that your retirement money lasts as long as possible, giving longevity to your money. In that, in that philosophy, in that belief, there's two tenets. Do you have to know it's going to work? Or is it okay if it probably works? That is very, very true for determining original Medicare with a supplement or Medicare Advantage. Original Medicare with a supplement, you're going to pay premiums, but it's going to work for you, period. Medicare Advantage, you're going to save money while you're healthy. And will it work for you? Probably. Is that good enough? For some people, that's good enough. They like to go to Vegas, right? Like, in, And it's okay that the house always wins <laughs> because they might win sometime. Right? But I don't know. Do you, How do you feel about your health care decisions? And I also have heard now that because of the um, the marketing tactics that are employed by Joe Namath and others, that uh, insurance agents now have to record their their calls when, particularly when they're selling these Medicare Advantage plans, because there's too many deceptive things that have been going on. Well, it's not even necessarily that there are deceptive things, because in truth, let's look at the commercials and the things Joe Namath and JJ say. Everything they say is technically true. The problem is they don't have to tell you about 
network restrictions. They don't have to tell you about prior authorization requirements. They don't have to tell you about guaranteed issue right to switch policies before they sell you a policy. So I kind of feel like the whole recording everybody's phone calls is overkill at best and completely useless and not necessarily burdensome to most insurance agents at worst because you're fundamentally you're treating a symptom not the cause if you really want people to make meaningful decisions you need to require people who sell medicare advantage plans to talk about prior authorization network restrictions the fact that those plans can change any year networks can change at any time you may not be able to get the services that you want so it's it's deception by omission rather than commission right other than listening to this podcast, what can advisors do to educate themselves about Medicare topics? Oh, this is really easy. Okay, so there is an amazing tool that the government does have at medicare.gov, not com, not org, not <laughs> medicare.gov. There is a plan finder tool in the upper right corner. You there's a link that says find health and drug plans. When you click on that, it takes you to a plan finder tool. Every single plan available in this country is available to compare through that plan finder tool. You can enter prescription medications and really see what plan is best for a person's unique needs. It's not hard to do. And as of about March, April of this year, they now have supplement prices. So Medigap policies, you can also compare as well. It's a really easy tool to use. Don't rely, I'm sorry, but don't rely on plan finder tools from specific insurance agents. You will not see every single plan that's available to clients. You will only see the plans that are best from the limited scope that they sell. And in some cases, it can be dramatically limited. So don't limit yourself to what an agent sells. Take a look to make sure that you're seeing the plan that is truly best for you and then determine, hey, insurance agent, do you sell this plan? Because this is the plan that I need. One more question I meant to ask on uh, Medigap supplemental coverage. Do you tend to recommend high or low deductible plans? So it really depends on the area. Uh, we use a specific calculation where we calculate the deductible, add it to the premiums in order to determine in some places you wind up paying more than you would if you just got a plan G. So take the monthly premiums of a high deductible G, multiply it by, multiply it by 12, and then see where you stand. Add in the deductible then up to 2460. Um, and see where they compare. It varies greatly by area. So I don't have a general rule of thumb of high deductible or no deductible. It really depends on the area. Tell me a little bit about your company, the uh, I-65 software and how you work with advisors. We love advisors. Uh, advisors, we do one-on-one -on -one Medicare consultations on a fee-for-service basis through 65 Incorporated. Um, we have advisors all over the country that we work with, and they they really want their clients to have a concierge approach to dealing with Medicare. You know, they just want their clients to talk to an expert. And often we love it when the financial advisors sit in on those calls so they can see what we're talking about and participate, especially when it comes to Medicare surcharges. They can help us calculate whether or not the client will be subject to them and develop strategies on how to deal with those. So anyway, so that's the consulting side. But with these one-on-one -on -one consultations, we what we did is we took our process and our expertise and essentially put it into a software box so that advisors can now do the same thing that we do through our consultations, but without having to become Medicare experts themselves. So, you know, again, like a social security timing tool, you're not a social security expert, but the tool empowers you to access all the expertise without having to 
know it. Um, the I-65 software tool also has a healthcare costs and long-term care predictor tool so that you can have meaningful estimates of healthcare and long-term care costs in retirement. Um, we talk about parents because the quickest way for a female, just being honest, the quickest way for a female in her 40s or 50s to derail her own retirement is for something to happen to her parents or her spouse's parents. And now she becomes the caregiver. She becomes the care manager, has to go part-time or quit her job, and her retirement fund becomes the long-term care plan for the parents. So getting to know the parents' decisions, good, bad, or otherwise, related to health care and retirement, especially for females in their 40s and 50s, is critical. If there's one key takeaway that you would like to leave with our audience of advisors about how they should prepare themselves to help their clients with Medicare decisions, what would that be? You can do this. <laughs> you can do this. You need to do this because quite frankly, if you don't help your client, who is? Joe Namath. <laughs> Do you really think Joe Namath is going to have your client's best interest at heart? Really, truly believe in yourself a little bit. Go look at the Medicare.gov plan finder tool. You're smarter than you think you are. You can help clients. Take a look at the tools and resources out there. It's not something you, you have to keep at an arm's length distance anymore. Well, we'll include a link to an article that Melinda wrote for Advisor Perspectives why Joe Namath may be the biggest threat to your client's retirement. We'll also include a link to Melinda's company, 65 Incorporated. Those will be in the notes that accompany this podcast. Melinda, is there anything else you'd like to add? Rock on. <laughs> well, thank you very much. And thank you for listening to the Gaining Perspective podcast with Bob Hoopscher today featuring Melinda Coghill of 65 Incorporated. To support our podcast, please share, subscribe, or leave a review to help make our podcast more findable here for your friends and colleagues. You can subscribe to Gaining Perspective on iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher. 